early on in the discussion of these mRNA vaccines, there was talk of these mRNA vaccines causing genetic disruption or modifying your DNA. And I just blew these concerns off because it, they violate what's called the central dogma of molecular biology. This is a, an idea that was articulated by Francis Crick back in 1958. Um, Francis Crick of the duo, Francis Crick and uh, James Watson, they were the two that um, figured out the double helical structure of DNA. Anyway, he um, says the cent he expressed the central dogma of molecular biology as DNA is the molecule that holds the information, and then this gets transcribed into mRNA and processed into mRNA, and then the mRNA gets translated into protein, and then the protein undergoes post-translational modification and folding to become the active protein. So this is the this is the direction of the flow of information. It doesn't go backwards. It goes this way. Um, now, I knew, and I think most people know that um, in certain cases, you can go from mRNA back to DNA, and that happens in retroviruses like HIV, where they have a, a enzyme called reverse transcriptase because it does the reverse of transcription, and you can turn mRNA back into DNA. But that doesn't that happens with retroviruses. And that doesn't happen normally because people don't have um, reverse transcriptase, or so I thought. Um, so someone pointed this uh, non-peer-reviewed paper, it's in preprint right now, but basically it, it, this is a group out of the Whitehead Institute and um, at, at uh, MIT. And so this is a, it's a legitimate group. And they have uh, a paper that's in preprint called SARS-CoV-2 RNA Reverse Transcribed and Integrated into the Human Genome. Now, um, I'm not going to go through the nitty-gritty of this paper because that would take a while. But essentially, what they did is they um, transfected some cells, some uh, tumor cells, with reverse transcriptase from line 1 elements or reverse transcriptase from HIV-1. And so what they did is they drove um, production of reverse transcriptase really, really high, you know, thousands of times higher than normal. And then when they did that, they were able to get the mRNA from SARS-CoV-2 reverse transcribed and to get it to integrate into the genome. Um, and so this I had never heard of before, this line one elements reverse transcriptase. So after um, looking into it, I found out that, yeah, back in 1991, someone figured out that, um, that line one elements have a reverse transcriptase. The line one elements are uh, something called retrotransposons which are like transposons, which I had heard of before. So transposons are these, or called jumping genes. They're these uh, gene structures that can move around um, within your genome. And Barbara McClintock um, actually won the Nobel Prize in 1983 for her discovery of these transposons. And she's the first woman to ever get an unshared Nobel Prize in medicine and physiology for her discovery. So I had heard of... Um, transposons before, but there's these things called retrotransposons, which are like the transposons and they move around, but they have an intermediary step where they go to RNA, then they go back to DNA, and then they move around in the genome. So um, in order to do that, you have to have a reverse transcriptase, and evidently there is one, and humans do make a reverse transcriptase um, uh, in order for these line one elements to function. Uh, so this is, is theoretically possible for this to happen. Um, and in, in order for it to make it happen, they had to um, make the uh, levels of this reverse transcriptase much, much higher than normal. There's another um, part of the problem of having this thing cause um, DNA alteration is that in order for the RNA to cause DNA alteration, it has to move into the nucleus because 
Eukaryotic cells have a separate membrane in the nucleus that separates the cytoplasmic component from the nuclear component. And this, um, you can't just move molecules between the cytosol and the nucleus willy-nilly. There's this thing called the nuclear pore complex that tightly controls any movement of molecules between the two. And in order to move between the two, this uh, protein called important has to identify something called the nuclear localization signal that's on the cargo and move it into the nucleus. So the mRNA vaccine RNAs do not have a nuclear localization signal. So they would, they would not be able to get into the nucleus. And then usually when our RNA does move out of the nucleus, so in the nucleus, the mRNA is transcribed, and then these TAP and P15 proteins attach to it, and they help it transport out through the uh, nuclear pore complex into the cytosol so that they can get uh, translated. So the mRNA vaccines, they put the RNA straight into the cytoplasm. They should never enter the nucleus, and um, so this sh shouldn't theoretically happen. But it's not impossible because we don't know everything um, about how this works. So it's theoretically possible that there's some mechanism that we're not aware of by which it could do that. Now, the corollary to that is that if, if, if it can happen with an mRNA vaccine, it can happen with any kind of RNA virus because a virus is no different than uh, the vaccine in terms of whether or not it can affect your DNA. So viral infection um, essentially is, um, in terms of risk to DNA damage, just the same as an RNA vaccine. And then in terms of actual known DNA damage mechanisms, like sunlight is definitely known to uh, change your DNA um, and any number of carcinogens that we're exposed to environmentally. So in terms of absolute risk, risk of mRNA vaccines causing DNA alteration is extremely low, but not impossible. Kind of like saying um, the chance of me getting hit with an asteroid when I walk out the front door is really low, but not impossible. The other thing that um, someone mentioned was this paper back from December 2019 that talks about something called R loops. Now, R loops are this thing where as mRNA is being transcribed in the nucleus, instead of falling off, they can get stabilized and form this loop. And when you form this loop, the DNA is unstable, cannot undergo repair, and you could um, cause genomic instability by forming these R loops. Um, the reason that this is not a problem with the mRNA vaccines is that this only happens during transcription of one of your own genes. So as it's being transcribed, it's complementary, so the base pairs match up with the DNA, and it can stabilize into it. There's number one. There's no way that the um, mRNA vaccine could enter the nucleus in order to um, make an R loop in the first place, because there's no no me known mechanism by which that can happen. And two, even if it did get into the nucleus, it would not find a complementary sequence within our genome for it to. Um, fuse to to create an R loop. So this is not a um, not an issue at all with the mRNA vaccines. So bottom line is, um, I first dismissed this idea because of the central dogma of molecular biology, and I figured, well, humans don't make um, reverse transcriptase anyway, so that automatically makes this impossible. As it turns out, we do make reverse transcriptase. There's not only the line one reverse transcriptase we have a um, telomere-associated reverse transcriptase as well. That one requires a very specific confirmation of the um, RNA and definitely wouldn't work for this. But the line one reverse transcriptase could theoretically cause reverse transcription of the mRNA. But the other thing that blocks it is nuclear localization and nuclear transport makes it extremely unlikely. Um, there's no known mechanism by which um, that could happen. Uh, but this, uh, the, the discovery that, for me, that there is a reverse transcriptase that's endogenously produced um, does make it not completely impossible, but basically highly unlikely. And if this were to happen with the vaccine, it would, it would also happen with the virus and any other uh, RNA virus that we get. 
and um, your risk of DNA alteration with things like sunlight and other daily carcinogens is much higher.